live from the Quadigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gb. The news headlines comes to you compliments. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. This is Network News for Monday, March the 18th of 2024. I'm Stacia Blake. In the headlines tonight, police investigating the death of U.S. citizen Siri Mantena at a resort in the south of the island. The possibility of extraditing Grenadian trio for death of U.S. couple discussed. And GBN sat down with business mogul George Cohen to talk about business success, opportunities, and Grenada. In regional news, U.S. charter flight lands in Miami as clashes continue in Haiti. While on the international front, Putin claims a landslide victory in Russia as the West condemns pseudo-elections. And coming up in sports, Serena Alexander and Ray Vaughn tell us first highlighted as rising stars in the just-concluded Republic Bank Intercall Championships. We'll have all the details for you right after this break. The first segment of the news comes to you compliments. Soft weave, bathroom tissue. Have you heard about the new soft weave bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. Good evening, this is GBN's News at 7. The peacefulness of Sunday morning was shattered by tragedy, with a disturbing incident resulting in the death of a U.S. citizen, Siri Mantena. The Royal Grenada Police Force, RGPF, has launched an investigation into Mantena's death, which occurred at a hotel nestled in the picturesque area of Grand Anne St. George. At approximately 5.10 a.m. on Sunday, authorities were alerted to a potential drowning incident, launching a swift and thorough investigation into the grim event. Preliminary findings from the authorities indicate that Mantana, a guest at the establishment, had ventured into the hotel swimming pool for a morning's morning swim when the unfortunate incident unfolded. Despite immediate efforts to resuscitate her with CPR, the victim remained unresponsive and medical professionals later pronounced her dead at the scene. However, details remain scant at this early stage of the investigation. An autopsy is scheduled for later in the week upon the arrival of Mantana's family. Efforts to solicit comments from the hotel by GBN's news desk were unsuccessful. GBN extends heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. We will provide further updates on this case as information becomes available. As of March 18th, 2024, Mantena's death brings a tally of visitors who have perished in Grenada so far this year to three. This number includes the British couple whose demise on Karaoke was attributed to an apparent drowning. Additionally, concern still looms over the fate of an American couple presumed dead by three individuals who escaped from lawful custody while awaiting a court hearing on multiple charges, including rape and robbery with violence. Amidst the aftermath of recent criminal incidents, Grenadians are grappling with questions surrounding the underlying causes of youth violence and have renewed calls for community-driven solutions beyond government intervention. Beverly Tellisford reports. As Grenadians try to come to terms with the recent spate of criminal activity that has left many disturbed, particularly the killing of 14-year-old Esther Patterson and the disappearance of United States couple Ralph Hendry and Kathy Brandle, questions are being asked about the root causes of such criminal behavior by perpetrators, all of whom are under age 35. Apart from the recent spate of gun violence, these two incidents in particular have caused outrage among the populace. Some 
family blame on the influence of social media, some blame the use of narcotics, others on lyrical contents of the music the youth listen to, while some lay blame on the upbringing of young people. During a recent press briefing, Prime Minister and Minister for National Security Deacon Mitchell said it's time Grenadians realize that there is a serious problem in society regarding young men and violence, which needs to be addressed at the community level. And so it requires all of us in our parenting, in our spirituality, in our churches, in our behaviors, to recognize that we have to socialize our men in particular, to behave in a manner where violence is not the first order of the day in treating with emotional issues, in resolving conflict, or in measuring your sense of value as a person and in particular as a male. The Prime Minister said government alone cannot fix the issue. It will require all hands on deck. The churches, civil society, trade unions, chamber of commerce, employers federation, sporting cultural community groups, leadership at the community level in particular, for us to be able to successfully tackle this issue. The Ministry of Social and Community Development have been doing a lot in terms of various initiatives like the Spotlight Initiative, but a government on its own cannot single-handedly tackle or make significant pro progress in addressing issues such as violence against women and violence against children in particular. Former Superintendent of Police Sylvan McIntyre echoed similar sentiments, appealing for more to be done through the education system. People and parents must teach their children the consequences of their actions. And what I find also is that there is limited information through our school systems as yeah. to crimes and offenses. Mm -hmm. um, the, the RGPF have been doing a fine job in that, in that, but they would need more help, more more hands on deck, and it doesn't have to be a police officer. Karakou resident, 30-year-old John Kendall Alexis, was charged with non-capital murder for intentionally causing the death of 14-year-old Esther Patterson by unlawful harm on Friday 8th, March 2024. The day before, on March 7th, 25-year-old Trevor Ron Robertson, 23-year-old Atiba Stanislaus, and 30-year-old Ron Mitchell, who reportedly hijacked a catamaran named Simplicity, belonging to U.S. citizens Ralph Hendry and Kathy Brandle, made their first court appearance on charges including double capital murder, kidnapping, and rape in connection to the couple's disappearance. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. Recaptured prisoner Levon Day remains hospitalized with injuries. His attorney warns against criminals attempting to mimic his escape. Beverly Tellisford reports. Escaped prisoner Levon Date is still warded at the General Hospital nursing injuries. According to his attorney, Jerry Edwin, Date is recovering from a broken arm and polytrauma. He was discovered with injuries when found by police on Wednesday, March 13, 2024. The attorney was relieved that his client was recaptured. Let me tell you, I am relieved because I was aware that the police had taken a certain posture necessary in the circumstances to recapture Mr. Date. Polytrauma is the term typically used to describe severely injured patients with two or more significant traumatic injuries. Date is expected to be charged as soon as he is deemed medically fit to be discharged from the hospital. I know that he's at the hospital from all the information I retrieved and that his recapture was problematic. It was not without its own challenges to the police. But I am relieved that Levon is back within the custody of the police. He should be remanded to Richmond Hill Prison as soon as he is cleared by medical officers at the General Hospital. The attorney warned any criminal considering mimicking Date's actions against escaping lawful custody. And uh, it surely is not advisable conduct by any inmate 
in particular those who are on the Riemann block, or anyone for that matter, to escape the clutches of the police. You are placing yourself in mortal danger. Besides, there is nothing to fear from the criminal justice system in Grenada. Date alias Magic of Griffin Lane St. Andrew, who escaped police custody on February 21st, 2024, was recaptured by members of the Royal Grenada Police Force during a sting operation that commenced at St. David and ended in St. Andrew. He was found with injuries and was taken to the General Hospital for medical attention and was admitted as a patient. Joel Joseph, 36-year-old farmer of Tillery St. Andrew, who was found in the company of Mr. Deet, was arrested and charged for harboring a criminal. Joseph was remanded to His Majesty's prisons. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. With just 12 days remaining until the highly anticipated 2024 Crifta Games, excitement is building among athletes and organizers alike. Scheduled to take place from March the 30th to April the 1st at the Cranny James Athletic Stadium, the event promises to showcase the region's top young athletic talents. In tonight's discussion on GBN's Beyond the Headlines, Aaron Moses, chairperson of the local organizing committee, will be joined by esteemed members of the athletics community to discuss the readiness of the participating teams. Among them will be Steve Augustin, president of the BVI Athletics Association, Thelson Williams, Guyana team manager, Freddie Evans, president of the Bermuda National Athletics Association, and Devin Bean, national coach of the Bermuda National Athletics Association. During what is expected to be a lively discussion, Moses will highlight the meticulous planning and preparations gone into hosting the event, emphasizing Grenada's commitment to ensuring a seamless and memorable experience for all athletes, officials, and spectators. As anticipation continues to mount, all eyes are on Grenada as the host nation prepares to welcome athletes from across the Caribbean for three days of thrilling competition and camaraderie at the 2024 CRIFTA Games. You can join the discussion from 8.30 p.m. tonight on GBN Television and all GBN's social media platforms. Three Grenadians who are at the center of a high-profile case involving kidnapping, rape, and murder of American couple Ralph Hendry, who is 66, and Kathy Brandell, who is 71, could potentially land themselves in the United States legal system. More in this report. The possibility of extraditing St. Andrew residents Trevon Robertson, Ron Mitchell, and Atiba Stanislaus to the United States for prosecution in the high-profile case has become a topic of discussion as reported by Law and Crime last week. Criminal defense attorney in the United States, Matthew Timpanic, explains. Well, definitely with this case, uh, it's about whether international law versus the United United States law. And we're trying to figure out what would apply in this case. Obviously, that this, these individuals can be tried in Grenada, but most people do not know that they can also be tried in the United States as long as they are physically present in the United States. How you would do that is the Justice Department gets a uh, extradition order bringing them to the United States to charge them with the same crimes. Investiga GBN contacted a director of public prosecution, Christopher Nelson KC, who has, however, explained that the issue of jurisdiction is not a simple question. He stated, and I quote, the issue of jurisdiction depends on the existence of specific legislation in the U.S. granting extraterritorial jurisdiction or on the some established principle of international law, end quote. The DPP further confirmed that there has been no official extradition request from the U.S. to date and has given assurance that if or when there is a request, it will be treated appropriately. If an extradition order is sought by the U.S. and granted by Grenada, the three suspects will face the U.S. legal system and the magnitude of the crimes committed if found guilty could lead to the death penalty. Meanwhile, unconfirmed reports are that a million-dollar lawsuit is in the making from the family of the American couple. GBN understands that the law firm of Henry Henry and Bristol has been retained to seek the family's interest in a civil matter. However, when contacted, officials from the law firm did not confirm or deny the information. 
Reporting for GBN News, Nisha Paul. This is News at 7. Coming up, GBN sat down with business mogul George Cohen to talk business success, opportunities, and Grenada. Stay with us. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Thinking about getting internet at home? Sign up now and get a $200 Visa cash card from Flow. That's $200 cash to spend anywhere that accepts card payments. Buy groceries, beauty supplies, pay bills, buy whatever you like. Enjoy super fast broadband and free cash now from Flow. Keeping you connected. when lottery players get together. Now the lottery games are joining in the fun. Check out the multiplier family of InstaCash games. Five times the cash at $2, 10 times the cash at $3, and 20 times the cash at $5. On your tickets, match any of our numbers with any of the winning numbers and win the prize below that number. There's more. Multiply your winnings up to five times, 10 times, or 20 times more. Winning is easy. Play Monday to Sunday. There are no draws to wait on. Win instantly. It's the multiplier family of InstaCash games with over $675,000 to be won instantly. Don't just buy one, buy all because family is everything. Must be 18 years and older to play. NLA, making family dreams come true. The story of Grenada is the story of Quab Bank. A story of humble beginnings, steady progress, persistence, and people. Grenadian people making things possible. This 50th year of independence is special, and we want to help you make it memorable. Bank on a bright future with Quab Bank as we celebrate more than 50 years of partnership with Grenadians. Take advantage of 100% financing to buy land, purchase, or build your home, or make those home upgrades. No loan fees, no legal fees, and low interest rates. Drive into 50 and beyond with 100% financing on new vehicles and get 50% off loan fees. Celebrate you. Celebrate Grenada. Make this year one to truly remember with special financing from Quab Bank. We're the Bank of Grenada and the Bank for Grenadians. Visit our website for more information and apply for financing today. Welcome Take charge of your financial journey by switching to an Own Your Own Loan at Arisa Credit Union. Arisa's Own Your Own Loan is as unique as you are because we know one size fits all does not fit you. With Own Your Own Loan, you get unmatched benefits including lower interest rates, flexible repayment options, discounted loan and legal fees, and savings from hardware suppliers. Tailor-made options that put you in control. Switch now and 
Step into the life you were always meant to live with Arisa's Own Your Own Loan. Arisa Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. Call us today at 440-1759 or visit our website at arisacu.com. Whether sipped neat, mixed into a classic cocktail, or savored on the rock. Our rum delivers a taste that captivates and satisfies. Choose greatness. Choose class code, the number one rum. Produced by the Grenada Distillers Limited. My name is Alimaka Motley. I've been here doing nails since 2017. Me being self-employed, I have realized that paying the NIS benefits me now and even when I retire. By the time I'm 65, I will be receiving contributions back from NIS. So I benefit because I'm self-employed. Anything can happen. If anything happens to you while you're at work, you've got a bad cold, if you have the COVID, you have dengue, we have all these diseases that are plaguing us at the moment. NIS will um, give you back some form of money when you're ill. So I would encourage all small business persons to sign up with NIS now. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank home easy loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Billionaire and owner of Calavini Island, George Cohen, took the GBN News team on a tour of his property, all in hopes of raising awareness about how people can develop themselves from nothing into something, much like he did, and to encourage self-sufficiency and positive contributions to the economy. Christina John has this dispatch. The island of Grenada is known to have attracted thousands of visitors to its shores every year, some of whom have returned to make it their home. One such individual is George Cohen. He has created his own little haven, nestled in the southeastern end of Grenada, the picturesque Calavini Island. It is now 24 years since this billionaire and his wife bought the 84-acre island, which, at the time, was nothing but bare land. Coming from humble beginnings in France, George Cohen worked his way to the top. He fell in love with the island during one of their visits to Grenada. It took this magnet 13 years to develop what has now become the magnet of the Caribbean, attracting some of the world's elites to one of the world's most beautiful private islands. Uh, I came on uh, Grenada in 2000, just before 2000, 1999. I came to visit a villa or uh, to be able to buy a, a house, you know, close to the sea. And finally, this island was to be sold. We visited and in five minutes I fell in love and uh, bought it. <laughs> Beginning, you know, the plan was to make a beach house, small, but every time I was coming here, every year I used to come, uh, every time I was wanting to add something, add something, add something, and finally we we made what what is there. 
Vinny Island now has swimming pools, a tennis court, gym, restaurant, hotel, and a farm, among other amenities. The level of comfort the billionaire, his wife, and guests enjoy in Grenada is attributed to the Grenadian people. The safety, the, the atmosphere that we got here, I don't know if it's due to your religion or to the, to the habit of the, of the country, of the population, but it is so, so good. Not like the other country of Caribbean, I have to say. The Grenadians are always smiling, always welcoming, you know, and always a sense of humor, you know. Over 90% of staff on the island are locals, some of them being employed since its inception. A trained team, Cohen said, he is both proud of and comfortable with. I can say is I realize that since uh, the beginning of the interview, I'm talking about the locals, the Grenadian, and uh, like me, if I was not Grenadian, but you're wrong. I'm Grenadian. I am Grenadian since uh, 20 years. But I'm not only Grenadian because I got the citizenship, because I got the paper. The paper, I don't care. I can throw it away. The paper, I don't care at all. It's in my heart. It's here. I spend most of my time here on Grenada because I love this country. And I'm so proud, not because I made Calivini or I set up properly uh, Secretary. I'm not proud of, about that. I'm proud that I have a team more than 100 people which are working with me since more than 20 years, some of them. They're all very loyal and they've been treated correctly, you know. The business tycoon is encouraging self-sufficiency among Grenadians as one of the viable methods he has implemented and a healthier choice. I have to admit it, it's not my decision, it's a decision of my wife. She was wanting to have, you know, food here which are uh, organic, organic. So all what we produce here is organic. And we provide to Secretabo all the vegetable, eggs. We provide a certain number of food to uh, Secretabo coming from Calivini. We have a kind of a small farm here, but totally organic. Cost a lot, but it's very good to eat. Having attracted some of the wealthiest people in the world to his island paradise, Cohen has contributed immensely to Grenada's tourism product. Apart from Calvini Island, he's also the owner of the Secret Harbor Hotel. So from the Calvini Island, where our news crew has been given a grand tour of the empire that Mr. Cohen has built and established and has become well known for over 20 years, I am Christalina John for GBN News. Wow. Now, reflecting on our history, on this day of the 18th of March, 1649, French colonists from Martinique landed in the Lagoon St. George's and initiated a successful European settlement in Grenada, which subsequently led to the destruction of the indigenous population. More in this report. The expedition led by French Governor Ashok Dapaké of Martinique under the guise of a fishing expedition laid the foundation for the colonization of Grenada. It began with the construction of a storage house for arms and ammunition, paving the way for the establishment of a proper fort. Dapaké lured volunteers to colonize Grenada with promises of tax exemption and land grants, culminating in the realization of French ambitions to exploit the island's economic potential especially its strategic location to trade near South America. Renowned Grenadian historian John Angus Martin reflected on this historic milestone, noting that the governor and his crew initially settled in the Lagoon area, where a monument now stands in commemoration. And the sandbar that the first settlement was established on basically connected Port Louis to the area in the back here that used to be called a spout. Um, 
um, so there would have been a sandbar that went all the way across the mouth of the lagoon um, that blocked it off from the carnage. And that's where the first settlement is. We know we have a drawing of that settlement that was done um, in 1667, and that shows exactly how the settlement was laid out, the buildings uh, the, the, that were constructed, the houses where people lived. The church was on the side of, side of um, over on uh, Port Louis area. And that settlement basically was maintained for about the first 20 years of the, uh, the colony. The French invasion was what Martin described as the doorway to Grenada's history, marking the introduction of slavery and significant societal changes. Um, basically, you would look at that date as it's the invasion of the French, invasion of Europeans, um, of Grenada, and the beginning of everything that we know today in the sense that they established the plantation landscape, the slavery plantation, which would bring in um, thousands, tens of thousands of enslaved Africans to work on plantations. So you look at it as the genesis of modern Grenada, um, they created the system that we inherit today, um, roads, parishes, um, the whole superstructure for plantation agriculture, and eventually the state of Grenada. Regarding claims by some historian that the indigenous people sold Grenada for commodities like bread and brandy, Martin explained that these exchange were viewed as trade rather than a direct sale of land, challenging the narrative of a voluntary transfer of ownership. The historian also acknowledged that while Grenada's colonization brought economic opportunities and development, it also resulted in the tragic demise of the indigenous population. So that is one of those things that we acknowledge because it's our beginning, but we also have issues with it because of what happened and how it happened. Uh, the bringing the invasion of the French also meant the annihilation of the indigenous population um, on Grenada. Said, um, had we we would not have Leapers Hill if we did not have the French coming in here um, in 1649. I think those are the things that they basically began a chronology that has led us up to today. Mm. As Grenada commemorates the significant anniversary, Martin encouraged fellow Grenadians to delve deeper into their history, believing that a better understanding of the past can provide valuable insight. Rena P. Thomas, GBN News. In a heartfelt display of solidarity and support, friends, family, and members of the St. James St. Andrew community came together at the Harford family home on Saturday to offer solace and strength as they mourned the sudden passing of their 32-year-old daughter, Vanessa Harford. More in this report. Vanessa's death last week Thursday has left behind a somber atmosphere, prompting an outpouring of condolences and support to her grieving family as they prepare to bid their final farewell. The traditional prayer event was held on Saturday, three days after her death, as a poignant moment for reflection and remembrance. Nessie, as she was affectionately called by those who knew her well, has been described described as a kind, respectful, and loving individual with a warm demeanor and vibrant spirit that touched the lives of many. I, I saw Vanessa maybe about eight days ago, and I was driving and I said, oh, long time I didn't see Vanessa, but I wasn't expecting her to go so soon. And, uh, Vanessa is one of the staff that you can call upon for anything. She doesn't call in sick. She's always at work. She's at work way before time. She is actually one of the favorites with the guests as well. Well, given her personality and everything. So we're holding it together as a department. Um, it's a shock to every one of us. For the years that I've known Vanessa, I can definitely say that she lived her best life. And after her mom passed, a lot had changed about her, and she always be like, oh, my mom is not here, but I'm definitely going to live my way, which is the best way. And that's exactly what she did. And on that very unfaithful day that she passed, she was doing what she loved, having fun, and her smile that day was definitely different. So I don't want us to remember no bad things about Vanessa, but how she lived and the last day that she was here with us, thank you. Vanessa would always have a place in my heart. <laughs> and her guys would always remain her favorites. Vanessa 
That's a beautiful girl. Very loving. Whenever she see you, it's a huggy, huggy person. So she greets you with a hug and that, that smile that would change somebody's mood when they see her. You could be mad or sad, but that smile you will get from Vanessa would put you on sunshine. Vanessa was just a sweet child, a loving child. I'd care for her a lot. I appreciate everything she done around me to this blessed day. God bless her. Rest in peace. Vanessa collapsed amidst the excitement of the final day of the Intercollegiate Championship last Thursday and was later pronounced dead. Although she was a past student of the Granville Secondary School, GSS, Mrs. Diane Abel Jeffrey, president of the Principals Association, remembers her as an avid supporter of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, SAS, which emerged victorious in this year's championship. Unfortunately, though, we got the sad news of the passing of one of our ardent supporters, Miss um, Vanessa Hafford, and I, want, I take the opportunity to express my sympathy and the sympathy on behalf of our school, our school family, to the family of Vanessa Hafford. Saturday's prayers were led by Pastor Stanford Simon, who emphasized the fragility of life and the importance of findings solace in faith. Vanessa has lived a full life. She lived her life and tell herself, I am going to SAS, I'm going to intercall. You head down. Excited about what would happen. Excited about waking up tomorrow morning the same way that you will you may not wake up. Think about it, you think about where your life is, just think that there is something unique about you. There is something special about you. The question is, what are you going to do with the special gift that God has blessed you with life? I do not know what God wants to do with your life, but I know one thing he wants to form you is your life. He wants you to tell him, here I am, I surrender to you. Vanessa, who was the fourth of eight siblings, had heart surgery over 20 years ago. The overwhelming show of support from the community serves as a testament to the impact Vanessa had on those she met. Her memory will undoubtedly live on in the hearts of all who knew her. GBN Newsroom extends condolences to the Hofford family in their time of bereavement. Reporting for GBN News, Nisha. Paul. Tonight we feature our future career leaders through the GBN ISAW Lens. A good eye catches all. GBN ISAW is brought to you by Claire Vision. Life is beautiful if only you can see it. Claire Vision Eye Center helps you do just that. We provide expert service, classy eyewear, and cutting-edge technology, all with a quality customer experience. See better, feel better, and look better. Meet us today at clairvisiongrenada.com or call 444-0055, WhatsApp 409-0055, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Clair Vision Eye Center. Let's see life and the world with a Clair Vision. Police officers dominated the career choices of students at the St. Joseph's Catholic Primary School during their career day on Friday. Other career choices included lawyers, soldiers, firefighters, nurses, and pilots. Career day serves as an opportunity for young children to explore various professions, broaden their horizons, and gain insight into different career paths. It also helps to foster curiosity. Additionally, Career Day provides a platform for professionals to share their experiences, knowledge and advice, inspiring children to set goals and pursue their interests. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. And still to come, Grenada observes World Meteorological Day. Stay with us. 
Get ready to witness the ultimate showcase of talent, speed, and determination at the 2024 Carifta Games. This prestigious event brings together the best young athletes from across the Caribbean, competing for glory like never before. With the motto, many people, one region, celebrating athletics, Carifta embodies the essence of Caribbean unity through sports, igniting a flame that illuminates the future of sports in the region. Don't miss out on this incredible event taking place at the Karani James Athletic Stadium from Saturday 30th March to Monday 1st April 2024. Get your tickets now at Grenadian Optical or visit GoToFed.com and secure your spot to be part of this extraordinary celebration of athleticism. A whole new level of convenience and comfort awaits you when you shop at Rise and Shine Supermarket and Hardware Supplies, Griffin Lane, Grenville. Convenient. Because we are open Sunday to Sunday. We're even at your service on public holidays. Comfort, because we are easily accessible to the physically challenged. Free Wi-Fi is available while you shop, and bags come at no charge. Everyday low prices and excellent customer care. Adequate parking available. We supply everything you can possibly think of. Family and home supplies, fresh meat, vegetables, and personal care products. All brands of cooking gas at affordable prices. You can send in your order, have it pulled, or pick up express. Are you looking for a reliable, affordable, and customer-friendly pharmacy? Look no further than Hills and Valley Pharmacy, the nation's leading healthcare products and services provider. We are committed to serving you at convenient locations. Find an extensive and affordable selection of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medical supplies at Church Street, Hillsborough, Karakou, Jubilee Street, Grenville, St. Andrew, near the bus terminal, and Halifax and Grenville Street, St. George. Our committed team is always available to offer valuable assistance for managing your health and wellness. Discover the additional benefits of our wholesale distribution on Halifax Street and our Medgar Center on Grenville Street, where we provide in-house physiotherapy, massage therapy, doctor consultations, and eye care services. Our commitment is to satisfy all your health care needs, including competitive prices, loyalty rewards, and special discounts for seniors. Contact us at 435-6904 and WhatsApp 535-4734. Choose Hills and Valley Pharmacy. Remember, your health is our business. Un, it's asking for your password. B R A N D I, the number four, E V E R? Who's Brandy? We're like the password that isn't your ex girlfriend's name. CG Unite. Good like that. The National Lotteries Authority is a proud sponsor of many cultural activities within the trial and state of Grenada. My name is Anderson Matheson, also known as Leftist, and I'm a Calypsonian and string band music player from Chiarico. I support the games of the National Lottery Authority because culture benefits tremendously. Annually, the NLA supports the Chiarico and Pritimatni Carnival, the Chiarico String Band Music Festival, and all regattas, among other activities. When I play the game of the NLA, I can see where my money goes, and it's an investment into our culture. Yes, Grenada, when you play the games of the NLA, you enable us to invest in the skills and talents of our people in the areas of sports, culture, and nation building. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Are you a VIP? Have you taken the necessary steps to safeguard your child's health? Let's get it right. Get your child on their vaccination schedule. Our national protection and coverage is our national priority. Our actions will impact Grenada's health and wellness. Let's make childhood immunization and vaccination number one. I'm Senator Jonathan Lacret, and I am a VIP champion. Let's make all our children VIPs, vaccinated, immunized, and protected. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan-American Health Organization. 
This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. Thinking about getting internet at home? Sign up now and get a $200 Visa cash card from Flow. That's $200 cash to spend anywhere that accepts card payments. Buy groceries, beauty supplies, pay bills, buy whatever you like. Enjoy super fast broadband and free cash now from Flow, keeping you connected. In a proactive initiative aimed at understanding, enhancing students' understanding of World Meteorological Day and climate change, grade five students from primary schools in the parish of St. David participated in a series of engaging activities. More in this Rena Pierre Thomas report. Grade 5 students from the current government school, St. Dominic's Government School, St. Teresa's RC School, Laura Christian Academy, St. Joseph RC School, and the St. David RC School were engaged in several hands on activities that helped them to better understand the weather and climate change. The event, organized by the Meteorological Office in Grenada, aligns with the Global Observance of World Meteorological Day, celebrated annually on March 23rd. Jerry Ann Fleming, an entry level med tech, at the Met Office highlighted the significance of such initiatives in educating students about the importance of understanding the weather and how it can save lives and properties. As you can see in the world, climate change is happening very rapidly. There's a high chance of different things happening. As you can see, we have a frequency of hurricanes that hasn't been there in the past couple of years and so on. That all has to do with climate change. So right now we're just educating our children, the younger ones, of things that we can do to prevent or to help assist with those kind of things. Fleming said that the students not only learned the different career opportunities, but also some of the instruments used. So right now our kids are developing some weather instruments. We're doing the rain gauge, the wind vane, and the radar. So stuff like, you know, in terms of the sunshine, we're teaching them about how to measure the rainfall, you know, and just keep in mind certain things that would affect the weather in the long term. So things like littering and, you know, all those things that could contribute to climate change, we're just educating them about it. So, um, so far, so good. They're receiving very well. Fleming said there are some activities in the pipeline to continue the celebration in recognition of World Meteorological Day. Right now, some of the projects are pending, so um, we can't really say for certain, but we have a couple things coming up later on this week. The theme for World Meteorological Day 2024 is at the front line of climate action with a focus on tropical weather, climate, or water-related issues. Rina Petal Thomas, GBN News. New root crop plantlets will be introduced to farmers at an upcoming training session. Christina John will give us the details. A new variety of dashing and tanya will soon be introduced to farmers. The Climate Smart Agriculture and Rural Enterprise Program, SIEP, in collaboration with the National Insurance Scheme and the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources, will conduct a root crop training session on Wednesday. The training is scheduled to take place at the Closier Community Center, primarily targeting current root crop farmers from rural communities, such as Closier, Belvedere, St. Omar and Florida, offering an opportunity to gain knowledge about the National Insurance Scheme and its new approach to self-employment. Saeb has sourced this new cultivator SIEP has sourced this new cultivar of root tubers from the Caribbean Agriculture Research and Development Institute, CARDI, on the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Climate Smart Agriculture Coordinator at SIEP, Kenley Edwards, underscored the importance of the proper training for farmers to ensure sustainable cultivation practices despite the availability of the variety in supermarkets. It's actually here in the market. Um, some of the supermarkets actually have it because there are persons um, um, who actually bring, in it, bring it into the country, import it into the country, and um, based on, on the size of it, the yield, um, it has some, some properties which I think will be very beneficial to our farmers. Moving forward, we will be doing more trainings with these, um, these cultivars. We plan to do so much more um, in the upcoming year so that we could have a good stock um, um, a germplasm of these, um, these plantlets so that we could boost our food and nutrition security but not only that, but increase our production on Rutubas, particularly dashing as one of our staple crops. 
Agronomists in the Ministry of Agriculture with responsibility for root crops, Troy Augustine, will be leading the session. He explains that the leaf spot disease resistant variety will be utilized to establish a demonstration plot that will specifically cater to farmers facing challenges in cultivation. Due to the limited availability of plantlets, the training schedule for Wednesday will exclusively target current root crop farmers. Christina John, GBN News. And stay with us, we'll have your regional and international news right after this break. When you need your prescription filled or you require non-prescribed medication, supplements, or all your personal needs, visit Gittins Healthcare at locations on Wall Street Grand Dance, Victoria Street Grand Dance, and Central Deputy Street Wall. Gittins Healthcare aims to provide an exceptional personalized pharmacy experience. Additionally, children under 5 and adults 55 years and over will enjoy 10% discount on purchases of $20 and over on prescription medication. Stop setting and for less, visit Kittens Healthcare, where your health is our priority. Like family, it's always exciting when lottery players get together. Now the lottery games are joining in the fun. Check out the multiplier family of InstaCash games. Five times the cash at two dollars, ten times the cash at three dollars, and twenty times the cash at five dollars. On your tickets, match any of our numbers with any of the winning numbers and win the prize below that number. There's more. Multiply your winnings up to five times, ten times, or twenty times more. Winning is easy. Play Monday to Sunday. There are no draws to wait on. Win instantly. It's the multiplier family of InstaCash games with over $675,000 to be won instantly. Don't just buy one. Buy all. Because family is everything. Must be 18 years and older to play. NLA, making family dreams come true. Good evening, sports fans. 17-year-old Serena Alexander and 18-year-old Rayvon Tullisford are names that have been making waves in athletics, emerging as standout athletes at the recent Republic Bank Intercall Championships. GBN News had the privilege of meeting up with these two remarkable athletes to uncover their inspiring journey and learn more about their success on the field. Hailing from St. David, both Alexander and Tullisford have always had a passion for sports, with throwing the javelin being their forte. Their dedication and determination were evident as they competed in the prestigious Intercall Championships representing their schools with pride. In an exclusive interview with GBN News, Alexander and Tellisford shared their journey. Walking with my coach, it's very hard working. Um, you know, he, he does always try to make us give it to all. And I feel like going to Intercall feels, it feels okay, relaxed. Well, I executed, so yes, going to Intercall, I was very prepared. And I was comfortable. And my performance, well, I feel that I could have thrown more, but satisfied well not not fully satisfied but okay with the distance and feel that I could throw furthermore well Carfta 2022 um I placed third place me and my partner Rivan well Rivan placed in first and I placed in third Yes, so it was. My expectation is to go out there, give it my best shot, show over 50, well, at least 50 or over 50 meters. If not, get a medal. Um, yeah. Inspired by two-time champion Anderson Peters, Tellusford aspires to succeed with the guidance of coach Paul Phillip. 
Well, first of all, I was a runner first, and then at from four, I started to throw javelin. Yeah, that was in 2021. Yeah, and um, I learned so much thing with me training with the world champion Anderson Peters and with Coach Paul's help. Yeah, and <laughs> for the past time being there. Yeah, I learned a lot just to be humble and execute everything that I learned in training, you know. Training with the world champion just put me at a different level to everyone else. Me just watching him through and watching how his javelin going and watching how fight going just inspires me to throw like him and sometimes even better. My expectations for character is to be on the podium and to get a PB at character this year. As Serena and Rayvon continue to pursue their passion for javelin, they remain focused on their goals and aspirations. With their sights set on future competitions and endeavors, they're determined to reach even greater heights in their athletics career. The next at Credit Union Margaret Dow netball tournament has kicked into high gear, and as teams battled it out on the court, spectators were treated to thrilling displays of skill and determination. In the Tiny Mites division, Dodgers emerged victorious over first choice stars with a narrow two to one win, showcasing their skill in the early stages of the competition. Meanwhile, in the junior division, Bob Simpson Academy dominated the court with an impressive 27 to two triumph over Rose Girls while Team Fletcher secured a hard-fought victory against Rose Girls with a final score of 6-4. to four. In the senior division, we saw unlaced ballers assert their dominance, overpowering Sprang's Jet Stars with a commanding 44-11 to 11 win. In a nail-biting encounter on Saturday, unlaced ballers emerged victorious against Net Stars in a closely contested match, clinching victory with a final score of 23-21. to 21. As the tournament progressive progresses, anticipation mounts for the upcoming Peter David knockout and Fast Five competition set to commence this week. The schedule for this week's matches promises thrills aplenty, with notable encounters including Rose Girls versus St. George's Institute, Pink Panther versus Team Fletcher, and Babs Netball Academy versus Combined Stars. The competition heats up further with the Fast Five matches featuring matchups such as Net Stars versus Unlaced Ballers, SGU Blue Dynamites versus St. George's Institute, and Sprang's Jet Stars versus Shooters United. With each team vying for supremacy, anticipation mounts as the stakes grow higher in the pursuit of victory. As the tournament reaches its climax, though, teams will vie for glory in the knockout stages, culminating in the eagerly awaited finals. In the week, the weekend promises even even more excitement with the shooting competition for all teams, followed by the closing ceremony where champions will be crowned amidst celebrations and a lot of fanfare, we're sure. The first in a series of election discussion, discussion meetings of the National Sports Council Secretariat commenced, commenced earlier today at the St. Patrick's RC School. The implementation of Grenada's national sports policy requires advancing with the formation of parish sports councils across the country, including Cariacou and Petit Martinique. The milestone was emphasized by Jonathan Lecret, the Minister for Youth and Sports, who considers this stage pivotal for the comprehensive development of sports nationwide. The National Sports Council, or NSC Secretariat, is spearheading discussions regarding the nomination and election procedures for officers at the parish level. According to the guidelines, each structured port sporting discipline within the parish must be represented on the council. In instances where leagues do not exist, delegates will be selected from clubs, schools and teams, or maybe even individual athletes. And of course, relevant leagues and organizations within each parish will be represented. An executive committee will be established from council members comprising a chairman, a vice chairman, secretary treasurer or also known as a finance officer and three directors. Moreover, each parish will have its own office supervised by an office manager and a parish coordinator. The election process and criteria for nomination will be deliberated from March the 16th to April the 30th of 2024. And that's what's been happening in the world of sports.
stand now for a look at what's been happening around the region and the wider globe. A chartered flight organized by the U.S. State Department for its citizens stranded in Haiti has landed in Miami as gang violence and hunger grip the impoverished country. Police in the capital, Port-au-Prince, are trying to recapture areas held by notorious gang leader Jimmy Cherizé, popularly known as Barbecue. The situation for ordinary Haitians remains precarious and dangerous, when many embassies and consulates are airlifting their citizens out. Cap Haitian suffers from almost all of Haiti's deepest problems, grinding poverty, chaos, disorder and corruption, but crucially not gang violence. So it's becoming the main safe haven for people forced to leave the gang-controlled capital Port-au-Prince. Another busload arrives, having run the gauntlet of a dangerous journey. It took us hours longer than it should, as we had to reroute around the gang checkpoints and there was gunfire, says this passenger, who was clearly shaken. Fenel Pierre made the same journey six months ago. It's almost impossible to pull yourself from poverty in Haiti. Fenel managed it. But becoming a middle-class businessman made him a target. The gangs destroyed his business, ransacked his house and tried to kidnap him. And in the process, plunged him and his family back into poverty. This is just 2% of the life I used to live. In fact, I'm not living. I'm just existing. The longer the power vacuum in Haiti continues, the worse the humanitarian emergency here becomes. In turn, more and more displaced people will flock to the city of Cap Haitian in search of refuge from the violent gangs that have such a tight grip on the capital. One of Haiti's main gangs has released a slickly produced video currently circulating online. It shows a well-armed militia, a group prepared to take on the Haitian state and any international force which might be deployed here. While the security situation is that of a failed state, so are the politics. We have violence in Haiti. Yuri Latotou was the head of the Senate and is currently under U.S. sanctions for alleged links to drug trafficking and gangs. That's something he denies and points the finger of blame at his opponents instead. Government works with the gangs. And this is the problem. The gains become another institution of the state. And in this situation, police can do anything. Amid the worsening crisis, the U.S. State Department has laid on a charter flight for Americans to leave for Florida. Several dozen took up the opportunity to flee. However, that's a luxury most Haitians aren't afforded and must seek a safe place inside Haiti instead. Will Grant, BBC News, Haiti. As her parents remain in police custody, lawyers representing the seven siblings of Hannah Matura did little to shed light on a number of questions surrounding the discovery of her skeletal remains. There's still no confirmation on whether reports were made to the police or the Children's Authority or how many of the siblings knew of Hannah's death and why it took seven years before a report was made. After summoning the media on Friday, the lawyers provided no answers. Behind the tinted glass of this X-trail, several of the Matura children arrived to be interviewed by the police. Their lawyers were their drivers. In a story that has captivated the country merely by the mysteries surrounding the details, on Friday the plot thickened at the Aruka police station. The lawyers, representing all seven children of the Matura family, summoned the media, but the children were still too hesitant to make a first public appearance. With many questions surrounding the death of Hannah Matura, the lawyers could provide no answers. When asked whether a report was made to the police or children's authority, they neither confirmed nor denied. As our interaction with the family continue, um, we will be in a position to address the media on, on those issues um, as time goes by. When pressed about members of the family being aware of Hannah Matura's death, the lawyers provided little clarity. Interacting with the children, would they have revealed any information to you guys about Hannah Matura's death? The only information that was revealed to us is that they too are surprised 
that um, there, are, there is information circulating about an, an autopsy report, whereas we have not seen one, neither have they. While the lawyers declined to provide the ages of the seven children to us, they confirmed it included minors. The question remains, who knows and what do they know? Is the police actively considering that any of these children might have been voluntarily or involuntarily involved? We have not been so informed. Family sources who spoke to Guardian Media on Friday suggested that Hannah Matura's death could have been avoided. However, they said multiple appeals for help fell on deaf ears. It is understood the family is weighing its legal options. When pressed on why adults in the house would not have reported the death of Hannah Matsura nor extended family, the lawyers would only say that is the crux of the investigation. Sources who confirmed reports of physical abuse in the Matsura household also alluded to a bitter property fight, saying there were people who wanted to kill the parents. Atop the pile of questions surrounding this discovery, there remains the big one. Who was Hannah Matura? That is, uh, well, we can confirm um, Hannah Matura was related to the persons whose interests we seek. Um, but again, that again comes to the base and the crux of the investigation that the police are conducting. With a face yet to be added to Hannah Matura's name, her death remains a mystery to the country. Russian President Vladimir Putin has claimed a landslide victory in Russia's presidential election, with election officials giving him more than 87 percent of the vote. However, Western countries have condemned the election as a sham, with no credible opposition candidate allowed. Election results on Russian TV, not a hold-your-breath moment. The winner, by a mile and a half, Vladimir Putin. What an incredible level of support and unity around the figure of Putin, he says, and a powerful signal to the West. But in this race, Vladimir Putin was, from the start, unbeatable. There were other candidates. Candidates, but no serious challenger. Potential rivals here are swiftly removed from the political stage, forced into exile or put in jail. And elections tightly controlled by the Kremlin. But if they couldn't win, Mr Putin's opponents could at least protest. And they did, in many parts of Russia. Opposition figures had called on Russians to flood polling stations at midday to vote against Putin or spoil their ballots, a symbolic protest against the system. We were here. I've never seen queues like this before at a Russian polling station. Before his death in prison, Alexei Navalny had backed the protest. It took courage to come. The authorities had warned that large crowds at noon would be viewed as illegal gatherings. I was here as a member. Ivan, not his real name, told me why he'd come. It was important for me to see faces of other people who would come here today and to see that uh, I'm not alone in my political uh, views and uh, that there are a lot of Moscovites and other people who believe that Russia can be another country with another future. For now, there'll be no change in the Kremlin. This election was never about would Vladimir Putin win or wouldn't he? Elections here are designed to ensure he wins and wins big. From the outset, for the Kremlin, this vote was about creating the impression that Mr Putin has a mandate from his people, not only for war in Ukraine, but also for what he's doing at home, transforming Russia into an increasingly militaristic society in confrontation with the West. But across town, Muscovites continued to pay tribute to Alexei Navalny, the man who'd wanted to be Russia's president. Here, a ballot paper in place of Putin's name, Navalny's. And this message, he's the candidate we wanted. And that's what's been happening around our globe today.
Time now for a recap of the night's top headlines. Police investigating the death of U.S. citizen Siri Mantena at a resort in the south of the island. The possibility of extraditing Grenadian trio for death of U.S. couple being discussed. And GBN sat down with business mogul George Cohen to talk business success, opportunities, and Grenada. In regional news, U.S. charter flight lands in Miami and clashes continue in Haiti. While Putin claims landslide victory in Russia as the West condemns pseudo-election. In sports, Serena Alexander and Ray Vaughn Tellisford highlighted as rising stars in the just-concluded Republic Bank Intercall Championship. If you miss any part of this newscast, there'll be a rebroadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at www.gbn.gd or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Stacey Blake and that's the news. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you again tomorrow night. Announces its on site renovation sale at our River Road branch from March 11th to 23rd. Get massive discounts 25% off on everything you can see store wide. But wait, there's more. Find the items tagged in red and get up to 50% off. Everything in store must go at LA Purcell on site renovation sale at River Road, March 11th to 23rd. Come on down and see your favorite LA today. The following is a paid political announcement.